Hello, Vinyl Community. This is Randy. Back today with another video. Yesterday, Sunday, May the 1st, 2022, I uh, did some record shopping. It was a fantastic uh, record shopping experience. I was joined on this shopping trip by MC Pinsky, or Paul. His name is Paul. Uh, his uh, Instagram name is MC Pinsky and uh, I tell you Paul the way I know Paul is uh, back you know a year or two ago when uh, Randy at Dead Wax 66 used to do live streams on uh, Friday or Saturday evenings uh, Paul would uh, frequently join us as part of the chat and his YouTube name was uh, or is I guess uh, Zoo Animal on Wheels so if you ever used to dial into those uh, uh, live streams that Randy did, uh, you probably know Paul, too. So, uh, yeah, Zoo Animal on Wheels was the name that he went by back then. He is from England, and he was here visiting in the, or I guess he's still here visiting in the United States uh, with his wife, and um, uh, I guess they were actually uh, in uh, Illinois, but they came to Nashville because Paul, uh, well, I guess they wanted to visit in Nashville, and uh, there was a band playing on Saturday night, and uh, so then we got together on Sunday. So, um, yeah, Paul went to see a, a band called uh, The Chats at the Basement East, and uh, I didn't go to see them, but I did uh, look at one of their videos on uh, YouTube, and it's really cool. They're, a, I guess, they're like a punk band from Australia. Really cool. The song I saw was called Smoko. So uh, I would highly recommend that you check out that song. It's really cool, Smoko. The guy just keeps on singing about, um, <clears throat> I'm on Smoko, so leave me alone. I'm on Smoko, so leave me alone. Uh, which is really cool. You know, I didn't want Smoko. Well, I, mean, I thought Smoko's sort of drug or something. But it turns out that Smoko is Australian for smoke break. So, you know, here's the guy. He's at work. He's trying to take a break from work, having a smoke. And I guess his boss or whoever wants to come out and talk work with him and you know so I guess he's telling him leave me alone I'm on Smoko so anyway Paul went to see that band on Saturday night and it was good so I probably should have gone to that but anyway, I didn't um, anyway so I picked him up in downtown Nashville on Sunday afternoon and we went to we went to three places actually we went to Third Man Records uh, I figured we should probably drop by there since it's pretty close to downtown anyway and could be sort of on our way. Turns out there's a third man records in London now. I think I had heard about that opening and so Paul had already been there but we went by anyway and um, so that was cool. I'd visit there for a while and uh, I think I think Paul picked up a couple records there. I didn't get anything there from uh, third man. After that we went by Phonolux which is um, not far from my house really and not too far from downtown Nashville and a uh, really good used record store so uh, we both got some records there I was looking at the uh, 10 years after section Phonolux uh, the way it's set up is that um, along the walls there are loads of records of like old classic rock bands and everything and all those records are like three four five dollar records five or six dollar records then in the middle of the store, they have a lot of repeats with the same bands, but the records that are filed in the middle of the store are, you know, usually in better shape. Those are 10 or $15 records or $20 records, I guess, just depending on how they decide to price them. So anyway, I was looking at 10 years after, and uh, I asked the guy working there uh, if, uh, well, I just told him that, you know, the one I was really looking for is Cricklewood Green. And he said, well, I think we, you know, we may have one over here. So he went over to the uh, part where the, uh, less expensive records are and found this one for me and so um, uh, yeah so I decided to get it because it looked like it was in really good shape and I can tell you uh, here is the record itself it's on DRAM records Darren or DRAM and um, uh, the reason it was in that bin is because at the beginning of side two You can hardly even see it, but there's a small scratch right there at the very beginning of side two. It won't play past it. But the rest of the record, I mean, I couldn't believe it when I put it on. I mean, side one just sounds pristine. So uh, the record really is in fantastic shape, and the only reason it was over there was because of that. So uh, 
uh, you just have to, you know, skip the first few seconds of side two. There's the only problem with that record. But like I say, the rest of it really just sounds really fantastic. So here's the uh, jacket. I've heard a lot of people. I've heard a lot of people in the vinyl community talk about this album in particular. Ten years after, and this album, Crickle Red Green, the gatefold sleeve, the jacket itself is in really good shape too. Ten years after is a uh, blues rock band from England from the late 60s. They were at Woodstock, and that's mostly where I knew them from. And uh, Alvin Lee is the guitarist and lead singer. So I was really glad to get this one. I've only listened to it once so far. Uh, it sounds very much like it was described though, late 60s uh, blues rock. And it sounds really good. So I'm going to, you know, obviously be listening to this uh, some more. There, I don't think there were really any hit songs on it. There's the track listing now. And, um, uh, you know, Paul was uh, interested in this record, too, so the guy actually went to the back of the store and found another copy for him, so we both ended up getting the same record there. Used copies of Crickleweed Green, and uh, I'm sure he hasn't listened to his yet, but we're going to compare notes after he gets back home and has a chance to listen to it, so I was really glad to get that one. I also, uh, you know, frequently while I'm there, uh, Funnel uh, Lux, those records that are along the wall, the inexpensive ones, they have a whole section of Ventures records there. I usually go by there to check out just to see if there's anything I don't have. And uh, I was watching a video just a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. Uh, that old goat, that old goat's vinyl showed his Ventures collection, and one of the records that he showed was this one, which I didn't have. Um, so um, uh, he made it sound really good. This is a really old one. This is like 1962. This is really one of their very first albums. Here's the track listing for it. And uh, so I picked this one up. This also is in, in really good shape. I mean, both the cover and the, the record itself just sound fantastic. This is a mono pressing, which you know, is preferable for me. So uh, there's a special note on the back of this album. Although this album is specially designed for the mashed potatoes, the tempos are great for many current currently popular dances. So, uh, mashed potatoes, okay. There was a dance, I guess, in the early 60s called the mashed potato. So, uh, uh, here, here's the, the, some other songs. Here they also do Poison Ivy on here. I love po Poison Ivy, it's a fantastic song. I love the Rolling Stones version of that. These, these of course, are instrumental, Ventures instrumental rock group. I love the back covers of their albums, too. They usually advertise other of their old albums there. So, Mashed Potatoes and Gravy by The Avengers. This one is on Dalton. I like getting the uh, Dalton records. It's got this label on here. This record must be incredibly old because this uh, person's address is in Knoxville. It has the street address and it says Knoxville 21, Tennessee. So, I mean, that means this address label was before we started using zip codes. I know we started using zip codes in the 1960s, uh, the early 60s, so those records. Yeah, it was really pretty old. After that, we went by Grimey's and uh, got a couple records there. I got a couple seven-inch singles there. So you may remember a couple weeks ago, I showed a record by M. Ross Perkins. Uh, he is a guy from Dayton, Ohio, who does all the instrumentation himself and uh, all the singing and everything on this album. I really like that album a lot. I'm still listening to it just about every day. And it's fantastic. So they had this seven new single there, Wrong, 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 is on the album. Um, you know, I think they made it, I mean, this is a good song, Wrong, Wrong, Wrong is good. But I thought it should have been, uh, 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 Here's uh, Here's Your Boy, should have been the single. But uh, I guess they chose this one, so this is good. Uh, but the flip side is one that I didn't have, Bird of the World, <clears throat> which is not written by M. Ross Perkins. It was written by um, uh, someone else, Bill Fox. But it's fantastic. I mean, it's just a fantastic song. And I, you know, this is what should be on the radio. I mean, uh, <laughs> sounds, uh, sounds awesome. So um, <clears throat> at the end of this video, I'm going to do a needle drop on this record. So stick around at the end and you can hear what this song sounds like. It has uh, some of that 12 string guitar. So when I reviewed the record, I said they kind of remind me of the Beatles, but also uh, the Birds, too. They have some 12 string guitar. And they sound just like. Uh, and where he does, so it's just like 60s pop, I would think, for the most part. Kind of like that Beatles when they started getting into more instrumentation and production, like on uh, uh, you know, uh, Magical Mystery Tour, 
records like that. So, M. Ross Perkins, this one is on <clears throat> Karma Chief Records, which is a uh, division of Coal Mine Records. So, this one is on this very cool red vinyl. Picture of M. Ross there with his space helmet on. Yeah, I'm really glad it gives us a really good, really good record. So stay tuned at the end for, for that one. And finally, the last one I got is this record that's been shown several times in the vinyl community now. Uh, a few people have shown this, I believe. And uh, it's the Schizos. Schizos are a Nashville band. They are a punk band. They sound like early 80s hardcore punk. This record sounds like it could have been on... Um, you know, maybe not so quiet on the Western Front. One of those compilation albums like that. So, uh, really cool. Um, and in the back of it looks like this. This cover, and especially the cigarette pack and stuff, uh, this, you know, the writing of it, this is an, an homage to Leonard Skinner's, uh, uh, pronounced Leonard Skinner album, their first album. So, and that album had a pack of cigarettes on the back of it, and the writing looked you know, a lot like that. They were just sort of saying, you know, Street, I think, on the front on that album, too. So, this is really cool. It has a, a band members listed on the back. So, Dale Schizo does the lead vocals. Sammy Schizo on lead guitar. So, Schizo Brothers, I guess. Hot Dog does the lead guitar. Uh, Los does drums. And Mr. Hand plays bass. Mr. Hand playing bass. You know, last I heard from Mr. Hand, he was trying to figure out why Spicoli was eating pizza in his history class. But I guess he figured that out, and now he has time to play bass, and he's playing with the schizos. So, uh, this is really cool, a hardcore punk. This has uh, four songs on it, three on side B, and one on side A. Warrant is the name of the uh, single on side A. The name of the EP is Come Back With A Warrant. But the song itself is just called Warrant. And then on the B side, it's I'm Always First, Gross, and Ugly. So this is on, um, oh, I didn't think it was, yeah, Sound, Sounds of the Schizos, I guess is the name of the, no, Sweet Time Records, since up here, Sounds of the Schizos, I think that's another, uh, I think uh, Capricorn Records, I think that Skinner record came out on Capricorn, I think it said Sounds of the South, maybe, or something like that, but the record label itself is Sweet Time Records, so black vinyl for this one. Really cool, and then an added bonus with this one. I wasn't even aware of it, but Paul actually told me while we were there uh, in the store shopping that it came. It also came with this poster. So, extremely cool poster there of the schizos. So yeah, it was a great visit. So uh, yeah, it was really nice meeting Paul and uh, going to all these record stores and stuff. So uh, had a great time and. Yeah, I guess that's it. So uh, now I'm just going to, uh, I'll do a needle, needle drop for it, this uh, M. Ross Perkins song. And uh, that's it. Let me know what you think about these records. If you've heard them, and, uh, or if you want to hear them, or uh, what you think about them. And, uh, uh, ten years after, and ventures, I guess. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I hope everybody's doing well out there. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you.